Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Green Diamond. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Green Diamond is a gorgeous green ink. And to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Levenger True Writer with a broad nib to take my notes for this video. Before we go to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is a chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. I see a very light minty green at the bottom. It works its way darker up, but interestingly, then we get the blue. So it's not even a yellow and blue that's making the green. It's a true green with blue bringing out some richness in this color. Now the one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. The major difference that I do see is that minty green is a little bit darker that's coming up. The green that appears goes for a longer period of time and we get no kind of highlight colors that appear in the one on the left. The blue across the top is a little bit thicker but it's the same tone of blue. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles it very well, which normally Robert Oster inks pick up immediately, but this one did very well with it. Makes me feel comfortable using it in a note-taking situation. Water, with only 30 seconds, reactivates, pulls up all of the darkest tones. We start to see some of the dots of the rhodia coming through the ink that's left. I feel that with just a little bit longer, the water's all that's going to be needed, but maybe not. And if not, pen flush to the rescue because the pen flush did everything that water did and certainly pulled much more of the ink off the page, leaving a lot more of the white rhodia paper behind. Bleach, as would be expected, obliterated it, leaving a surrounding area of blue, the blue that was at the top of the chromatography. Now for the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Green Diamond has a viscosity of 1.68. That puts it in the red. That makes it a very wet ink, very wet. Don't put this in your pen that's a gusher. You may wind up with sort of this green bleed pool. I doubt that, but this is gonna be a very wet writing ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Green Diamond has a, a average dry time of 21 seconds. So it's normal, but the very high side of normal. Just don't use this then if you have to be able to turn the page quickly while you're writing. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form and to keep my writing sample consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at some Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather spread halo, sheen, it does offer some nice shading throughout this 1.1. Nice and dark to light in the rubber, to dark again. Very, very nice to look at it. Get it again all over in the diamond. This shaded very well with the 1.1. The extra fine had no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and again, some of that lovely shading all over. It's lighter to darker and it's a gradual shading. It's not an all of a sudden shading which makes it very nice to look at. 13 seconds to dry. The medium, we lost the shading. It had no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade. It took 22 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine and the medium, the extra fine showed us some color variation. We got it. The medium showed us none and we didn't get any. The smear test says you could likely recover it and I believe it. Tomoe River. No bleeding. No, you know, and then of course we have ghosting. I don't count the bleeding that goes on with 
at the scrubby. I'm putting it on stupid thick to see if there's any kind of sheen. And well, there's not here. Uh, the 1.1 has a really neat tone to it. A really neat tone of green for being on that cream color paper. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It's still beautiful tone. 18 seconds to dry. Darker tone with the medium with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. 34 seconds to dry. This is a really nice looking green. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium showed us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. The smear test says you can't recover it and you probably can't because you wrote on Tomoe River paper. Eh. Anyway, Rhodia. Now this spot's not really a bleed spot. That's a transfer from underneath. Otherwise we have no bleeding, no ghosting and the 1.1 gives no feather spread. Halo sheen. It does offer spaces with shading. Spaces with shading. The B is darker than the ERT. The R is darker than the O. The G is darker than the RE. And then the EN is lighter again. So the 1.1 offers some nice shading. The extra fine has no feather spread. Halo sheen. It does a nice job of that gradual shading all over in the writing sample. The extra fine, it really did a standout job. 14 seconds to dry. Now we lost some of that standout job and it just became a nice green with the medium. The medium gave us no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 27 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the, the extra fine shows us some color variation and we got it. The scrubby of the medium showed us none and we didn't get it. The smear test says you can likely recover it. I did write with this with a, a broad Levenger True Writer and it's a wet pen and we get a beautiful green all over with absolutely no other qualities. Yeah. Black and red paper. Black and red paper had no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 had no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does offer some shading in some areas, some nice shading again in the Robert, in the diamond. It's nice all over it. It is with 1.1. And with the extra fine, a little bit darker tone, no feather, spread, halo, sheen. And yes, we get some nice shading all over this ink all over this ink, all over the writing sample. 10 seconds to dry, very manageable. The medium, way darker tone with no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading here, 18 seconds to dry. The extra fine shows us some color variation. We got color variation. The medium showed us none, we got none. The smear test, I don't think you could recover it. So hey, what is? what about Limon paper? We haven't seen that in a little bit. Maybe that can give us some uh, decent performance on this paper. No, no, Limon doesn't like fountain pen ink, except for like two of them. We get tons of bleeding, but it doesn't touch the page underneath. The back side of the page is completely unusable. Yes, we get plenty of show through. The 1.1 has feathering, crazy, ugly, 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 ugly feathering and spread, lots of spread, crazy spread. It has no halo, sheen, or shade. The extra fine, there is spread. There's no feathering. There's no halo, sheen, or shade. It took 11 seconds to dry. When we went to the medium, we get spread. We get small feathers all over all of the writing. Like the quick looks blurry. But over doesn't look too bad. Over does have small feathering all over it. It's just not as bad as quick. It has no halo, sheen, or shade. It took 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, well, the scrubby for the extra fine shows us color variation, and we didn't get any. It lied. The medium showed us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. And the smear test says you could recover this horrible mess if you smeared it while you were writing. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's Green Diamond, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Birmingham Pen Company's Edgar T. Steelworks Coal Black because that name is just so long it adds like 35 minutes to this video. No, but the green and the black look very nice together. It makes me think kind of like the Dallas Stars in the NHL. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if they...
Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Green Diamond? Now, what it lacks in some of its features as an ink, the color is so gorgeous, it more than makes up for anything that it lacks in certain performance areas. And the tone itself reminds me of the jewel used in Jewel of the Nile. Great movie, great gem. This ink matches its tone because I believe that that's what Robert Oster was after. Sure, because it makes me feel better to think that because I loved that movie as a kid. Thanks for watching.